Hey, construction legends. So in this video today, we're gonna to talk about five shocking things in your contract that if you don't negotiate, you could potentially lose your company or lose a lot of money. Hi, my name is Kim Brennan. I'm CEO of a company called Quantum Contract Solutions. The reason we make these videos and the podcast is because there's so many construction companies out there that are losing money hand over fist based on what's in their contract and what they've signed up for. And hopefully just by watching these videos and listening to the podcast as well, um, you, We'll learn from everyone else's mistakes, be able to implement them in your business and grow your company, make more profit. And that's what we want for you guys. Reduce your risk too. There's five things that really can impact you when you're looking at your con contract. If you don't negotiate these things, you're really putting your company at a disadvantage, right? The first thing is not having a reciprocal termination clause. What that means is when you go into the contract and you look at the termination clauses, a lot of times the, your client, right, can terminate you for a load of different reasons. They can terminate you for convenience. They can terminate you for default. So convenience is basically just, they just want to get rid of you. They want to get someone cheaper in or, you know, they've changed their program and they just want to get rid of you. Okay, fair enough. The other one is default. You haven't done the work that you're supposed to do. Okay, so that's a big one. Now, that's obviously fair too, right? If you've not done what you're supposed to do, well, what they're supposed to do, they need to get rid of you and get someone else to do the job. The problem is, if you don't have a way, a lot of contracts that are written now is you don't actually have a way to terminate them, right? So it's all about the ways that they can terminate you, but you can't terminate them. So you need to make sure you have what's called reciprocal termination is that you can terminate them for default. Now, what can happen in this in real life, what's that mean is that... For them to default on the contract, that really means you know they, they haven't paid you. That's the main one. They're supposed to pay you. They didn't pay you on time for whatever reason. Maybe, maybe they've gone insolvent. In this situation where there's no termination for their default, you could be in this situation where you have to continue to work even though you don't know if they've paid you or you don't know what's going to happen in the next month. And obviously, that really affects your cash flow. So you need to have that sorted. The next thing is having unlimited liability. Okay, It means that if you mess up on the project or something really goes very wrong, they can come after you for way more than the contract value is worth. Okay, so they could potentially clean out your, your company. So you want to cap that or the aggregate liability, it's called at a maximum of the contract value. So at least, you know, if the worst things happen, that your maximum exposure is the contract value, ideally 50% of the contract value. That's number two. Number three is having no cap on your liquidated damages means that if the delay is huge it could just those costs could just spiral and spiral and spiral and get bigger and bigger and bigger so if you've got a cap on your liquidated damages so you know it's x amount per day up to five or ten percent of the contract value at least then again you know that your your risk is limited to just that amount okay and it's not going to be something that could spiral out of control and you end up losing your company losing a lot of money the next one is consequential damages or con consequential loss, which is essentially a loss of profit. So to give you an idea, liquidated damages, let's say you're building a hotel, right? Liquidated damages is you compensating them for you, the, the costs of you being late. That's what liquidated damages in building the hotel. Now, in for consequential damages or consequential loss, that's you compensating them for a lack of not being able to rent out the hotel rooms and their lack of profit. Now, depending on how big your client is and what they're, you know, if they're an oil and gas company or mining company, their loss of profit could just clean out your company straight away. Okay, so you never really want to agree to consequential damages, consequential loss. So make sure you go and check it in and get rid of it. And the last one is fixed materials. We see this a lot with companies that they install very expensive materials. So to give you an example, let's say you are um, installing steel onto a project and you don't actually get paid for it until the steel is installed on site. So let's just say you take out a big loan for a million dollars and you get this all of this you know, steel columns delivered to site. And then when you get to site, they say to you, hey, you can't install that. All this other stuff hasn't been you know, done. It's completely not your fault, but you're not going to be able to get paid for it until it's installed. So now you're basically sitting on this loan that you have and paying back all the interest on that and, and for no reason. So you're going to make sure that you have specified that with your fixed materials, particularly with these you know, larger type of purchases that you may have that might come back to bite you, that you have it covered that you will get paid or at least you get paid enough of a proportion that you don't have that issue with like big interest repayments or whatever.
Okay, and that's it. They're the five things. So go ahead and implement that into your contract. Um, and at least that will reduce your risk substantially um, and set you up for success on your project and limit the downside. We're all about limiting the downside. Just as Warren Buffett says, you're looking for a low. You know, you're not looking for the huge projects you want over time. You just want to make sure that you're limiting your downside so you can stay in business over the long term. And that's really how you can grow. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.